I'm in the baby data and I've just been looking at the graphs and the descriptives for looking at the weight of the babies and whether or not their mothers smoked. And now I'm going to perform the t-test which will give us the actual p-value which I'm guessing is going to be zero um, to test the null hypothesis that there is no difference between the birth weights of the babies whose mums never smoked and whose mums ever smoked. So if we go into analyse and compare means, we've got a few options here. Uh, a one sample t-test is when you're comparing just one lot of measurements against a known value. So if we believed that the average birth weight of a baby was 120 ounces, we could test the whole sample against that one weight and that would just be one group together and it's a one sample t-test. We've got two groups. Now they're not paired because they're completely separate. They're independent of each other. We would have paired samples if we had a treatment or a measurement that we took twice on each person. So perhaps we gave them one treatment, took a measurement, and then we gave them another treatment and took a measurement. Or you could take a measurement on their left hand and a measurement on their right hand and compare the difference between that. And when you've got two measurements on the one person, they're paired. And there are other situations where you can get paired data too, but in humans it just usually means we've measured them twice. We've got two separate groups. The babies can only get born once, so they're completely independent of each other, so we're doing an independent samples t-test. A test variable, this will have to be continuous, the birth, birth weight, and then our grouping variable is ever smoked, and our groups, I think our groups were numbered 1 and 2, if this doesn't work we'll just have to go back and do it again, um, could have been 0 and 1, I have a feeling it was 1 and 2. Options, that's fine, you could um, you, took, you could get 99% confidence intervals out if you wanted to, but usually it's easier just to leave it at the default. Okay, now this can take a little bit of explaining. So the first box here is just telling us um, about the data set. So we can see that we've got 533 babies in the never smoked group and 678 in the ever smoked. We've got the mean, the standard deviation, and then the standard error of the mean. So we can see from these two means that there is a bit of a difference and then this test down here is going to tell us if that is statistically significant. Now the independent samples t-test can be done two ways. Um, the mathematics behind it is just a little bit different depending on whether or not we assume the variation in the two groups is the same or not. Now by variation I'm talking about the measure of how spread out all the values are. So if we have a look up here at our box plot, it looks like the never smoked babies are just a little bit more squished in than the ever smoked. But it's it's really hard to tell from this plot, um, mostly because we've got these outliers. So it's really hard to work out visually if there is actually is any difference in the variation. But that's okay because SPSS has done the test for us. So Levine's test for equality of variances. Now the null hypothesis is that the variances are equal. We've got a very low p-value here. So we've got strong evidence to reject the null hypothesis and therefore we're going to assume that the variances are not equal. So equal variances not assumed. So this means we're going to use the second version of the test, which is the bottom line here. So this first box here is all about testing the variances. Then once we've worked out which test we're using, we can just uh, forget about that and look, about, look at the t-test for equality of means. So I'm looking along the bottom line here, and you'll see that it actually hasn't really made much of a difference. The, um, the p-value is the same in either case, um, and the estimate of the mean difference is the same. We've got very slightly different numbers here, but really it's not much. So even if you accidentally choose the wrong version of the test, um, it won't necessarily have that much of an impact. So the null hypothesis for the test of the means is that babies who are born to the mothers who have never smoked weigh on average the same as the babies who are born to the mothers who have ever smoked. And then alternative hypothesis is that the means are different. So we've got a very low p-value which is very strong evidence against the null hypothesis and therefore we're going to conclude that the birth weights are in fact 
not equal, that they're different. And our estimate of the difference in the birth weights is given here, the mean difference. So on average, we expect babies who have been born to mothers who have never smoked to be 5.8 ounces heavier. I wish I knew what an ounce was. I should look that up. Not much, probably. So 5.8 ounces heavier than um, babies born to the mums who have smoked at some point. And again, we've got a confidence interval. So we're 95% um, sure that we've covered the true estimate of the difference with this confidence interval here. And often people just say that they're 95% sure that the, um, the mean difference is between 3.8 and 7.8.